Hello. I'd like to do a very quick recording to describe a methodology for rapidly building a MOOC. Now, before I start, I'd like to just describe a number of underlying ideas uh, that'll be very helpful to understanding why we're taking this approach. Now, the first of these is that the cost and effort of developing learning materials is actually holding us back from doing it. An awful lot of learning materials, including MOOCs, are being developed to a very high level of or high production value levels, and this is making them very expensive. It is possible to use lower production value, but good educational values, and to get these done with much less effort. Now we could say that it's the old 80-20 or 20-80 rule. With 20% of the effort, we can get most of the educational, 80% of the educational impact we want. Now, a good example of that are the Khan Academy videos, which are very simple videos, which are just a person drawing on a black screen and talking along of it, essentially, in a way, amateur videos, and they have been hugely successful online, and they really show that this um, um, concentration on, I suppose, good content as opposed to good production values can have a huge impact. What we're going to really try to do is to replicate fairly simple but effective teaching. Something that you might do in front of a small or larger class group with a computer and a data projector. You might use PowerPoint to show the content. You might do demonstrations on your computer or you might use a chalkboard often beside your projector but that can be done on the computer as well just like in the illustration shown. Also, in such a, a MOOC or massive open online course, you might have quizzes to allow students to self-test themselves because it's really not possible for the uh, lecturer to test uh, or to give feedback to students at a large scale. Um, it, it would also be considered good that students are able to try out things. Once they're shown things, they should try to apply that knowledge. So it's probably quite important that there be assignments or exercises for the students to try in a MOOC. OK, so look at a simple approach to an online course or a simple approach to developing a MOOC. First of all, uh, it, it probably should be stretched out of a number of weeks to give people time for the content that they're taking in, the ideas that they're taking in to sink in and give them time to uh, apply it. Uh, research seems to show that people prefer these to be shorter, maybe about five weeks long, but a lot of us may have to fit these MOOCs or open courses into our existing semesterized schedules, so people often like to make them longer. So somewhere between five and 12 weeks long there might be a good way to design a course. Now let's drill down. These weeks would be more or less identical in structure, or put it like this, if we're looking for an efficient way to build them, we might like them to be identical in structure. So let's look at how a single week might be structured. Okay, in this particular structure here, I've got three videos. I've got some additional reading, which, by the way, might be additional viewing from all those wonderful free resources out there, a discussion forum, some place to ask questions, and a quiz to self-test an exercise assignment. Let's just look at these a bit longer. So these videos, you might make three to four of them a week. Now, depending on what you're doing, may, you may decide otherwise. Now, an important thing is research has shown that people prefer these to be much shorter, as short as seven minutes long, perhaps even shorter. We're sort of suggesting that an optimum is about seven minutes. You should try not to be going beyond 10 minutes. Now, if you've got a particular coherent piece of learning that you want to get across that's going to take longer than 10 minutes and can't be split, then you should do it longer. But if possible, if you can break things down to shorter videos, they are the best. Now we're talking really simple videos. These are not, this is not interactive learning materials which ask you to do things and respond accordingly. These are just simple videos that you play from start to finish. You could pause them, rewind them a little, go back to the start. And if you have some sophisticated hardware, where you might even be able to play them a little faster. But by and large, they're just simple videos you can play over and over again. So three to four a week, maybe seven to ten minutes long. OK, the additional reading. We just should draw your attention that why would you be reinventing the wheel? There's some great materials out there on the web, videos on YouTube and other learning materials. It's probably a good idea to build these into your courses 
to bring down the cost for you to develop the course. You could theoretically build a course completely from other materials, but you might like to have some of your own. So it's up to you to decide what the balance is of materials, maybe videos you create yourself or other materials you create yourself and free materials from the web. Now these additional materials that could be optional, they could just be extra reading for those that are particular interest, or they could be a compulsory part of the course, part of the learning, required in order to fully understand the content. Now, there will always be difficulties in people absorbing, so it's probably good to have an area where people can have discussions about the content. Now, these would be peer discussions between the students taking the course, because in a MOOC, a lecturer would not have time to respond to all of these. So we're talking about uh, peer support, mainly in the discussion forums. People could ask questions, I can't understand this. Also, discussions allow them to to discuss the application of the content and get a deeper understanding of it. And that can be con contrasted with quizzes, which I suppose the function of quizzes is for self-testing. It's very difficult to write quizzes that test deep learning. So, so, I mean, it's a lot of work to do that. So, But it is quite easy to develop quizzes that take test a basic understanding of the of the buzzwords or terminology of the week uh, and in a way they act as a, a check to see did they listen to the videos did they do some of the reading that's all it is a check to see that they actual do it and it can be used for basic certification something certification that might be like a certificate of attendance or a certificate of participation and it also, if they do it honestly, they can get a feel for how they're doing on the course. Now, it's probably best that uh, if you do give some learning materials to students, that they should be able to try out something themselves. See, they can uh, do, do something with this material. So we would suggest that you would give them an exercise. Maybe not necessarily every week, but probably best if it was every week. In other words, they learn some stuff, they try it out. Now, these exercises could be in the form of assignments where they're graded, but the lecturer is not going to be in a position to grade this. So it might be considered that you allow the students to grade each other. Research has shown that this is actually very effective and uh, surprisingly reliable. So that should be considered for as well. So there's more or less the breakdown of a single week and all the weeks could follow more or less this simple format. OK, now we're going to have a look, first of all, at um, the video production format, because you might imagine oh, producing videos is a very complicated thing. But we do have sort of a, a suggestion for a streamlined, quick video production method. Again, uh, following the idea that 20 percent of the effort will get you 80 percent of the impact. So the idea is to produce good videos, pedagogically good videos, as opposed to very high production values. So let's have a look at this, this video production process. Well, think of yourself as standing in front of a group of students and you're going to give a 10 minute presentation uninterrupted or seven to 10 minute presentation uninterrupted. Now you should have a lesson plan. You should know what you're going to cover in this and that. Um, and you should have all your materials ready, all your windows, including maybe a PowerPoint slides, some other windows, maybe um, a, an application that you're going to use and you're going to demonstrate or maybe some web uh, pages that you're going to show people. Okay, have all those w uh, uh, videos ready um, and then you start up your recording software, okay? Uh, now, th when I say start the recording software, I'm not saying start recording. You'd start your recording software because the recording software will most likely, and we use, we recommend Camtasia Studio, allow you to check your hardware, check your camera if you want it, or to particularly to check your audio. It's very important that you check your audio. Okay, then you would start recording. And then you would talk just like I'm talking now, and um, you may decide that if a phone interrupts that, it does or does not interfere with the uh, intrinsic um, uh, pedagogic value of it. If you think it doesn't, just do your recording, try and get it from start to finish. So you start delivering, start talking and start going through your slides or showing the screens and talking about it and doing certain actions and finish your recording. You could pause and resume while you're in the middle of that. Don't be afraid to leave long gaps because these can be removed later. So you would finish your recording and at this point you would have check your recording to see 
if you were fairly satisfied with that. And if you are, well, is it acceptable? Well, you may decide it's not. In which case, if you're talking about a five, seven, ten minute recording, you may find certain errors in it. It's probably easier to re-record it rather than to edit it. In fact, you can be pretty sure that if you have modest quality objectives and you keep the recording short, it's just easier to re-record it. And after two or maybe three recordings, you'll most likely get something that's acceptable. This We can do some little editing, like adding a top and tail onto it, maybe if you left some gaps in it, and it is a good idea to leave gaps if you're moving between windows and things like that. These can easily be removed so it runs a little bit quicker. You could send, you could edit this yourself if you feel you want to get the skills of the editor, or you could send it to the editor who will do minor edits, and maybe publish it to some place like YouTube, and then place the link in the course. And there you have, that's the video production process that will get you moderate to good quality videos at very little effort. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is simple quiz creation. We would use the GIFT format, which is a, a widely recognized format for typing quizzes in a text editor or in a word processor. So we'd have that text editor, we'll create a text file, we'll send this to the person who's assembling the course, who'll import it into the course platform. So all you, as the subject matter expert, have is to think up of the questions and understand the GIFT format so you can do it. So here's some examples of the GIFT format. Or, or here, this one is a generic one. You have a double forward slash for a comment line. It's a bit like a programming language, if anyone's familiar with that. Okay, and this a comment line is something that's ignored when it's sucked into the platform. It might be for the person just reading it. You can give questions a title if they're uh, preceded by two colons and have two colons after it okay so don't don't have to have a question title you can have the wording of the question okay i hear we've just got the word question but that could say what is the capital of the united states and then you have a an opening curly bracket which says the options for the answers are coming now a correct answer starts with the equal sign so you'd write the correct answer after that you can have uh, a wrong answer starts with this uh, tilde sign or a squiggle okay so you could have and you can have several wrong answers and if you put a an um, um, a um, hash symbol after that you can have a feedback or a response to a wrong answer that comes back to the person so it might have another wrong answer a response when they give it that answer another wrong answer a response when they give that answer another wrong answer another response and that's the end of the answers so that's typical structure here we have an example over here, and I've added in another little feature to this example that you might be interested in. You can do an awful lot with multiple choice questions, but often you might like an image. Now in this one we don't have any comment line, we don't have a question title, we just have the text of the question there, and that becomes the title, by the way. Added onto the text that we have some HTML, by the way, for those of you, any of you that are familiar with HTML can use this to insert images. Now, or we can sh we can do this for you, or your editor can do this for you if you supply them with an image. They can insert it there. You just have to tell them which question it's for. Okay, and then an incorrect answer, a, a, a correct answer, an incorrect answer, an incorrect answer. That's the end of all the options no feedback there just some four answers the second of which is correct so that gives an example so if you know the questions you want to ask you can type them quickly you don't have to worry about using the platform and learning all that just type it into a text file and then send it to the course assembler who will suck it in okay now i'm going to do a recording uh, a camtasia recording demonstration separately to show you how to create videos using Camtasia Studio. I'm not going to do it in this video, but basically it's going to cover the follow-up, how to turn on your Camtasia recorder, how to test the audio, how to check your webcam if you want to use a webcam, how to open all the win and telling you to open all the windows that you need, start recording, you can pause, resume, finish your recording, save that recording, Enter the editing software because that's where we'll check to see if we want to keep this recording, if this is the one we want. And then we can share it so that we can send it to a an editor who would uh, do the post-processing and load it into the course. Okay, 
and that's it for now thanks for your time